Have you ever tried to design a database but felt lost trying to relate the tables correctly? In this video, I'm going to break down the five steps to relating tables the right way, including an easy way to work out which direction your relationship should go. First things first, every table needs a primary key. This is a unique identifier for each record in the table. Without a primary key, you can't reliably relate data between tables. Here's an example of a database I've started to work on. It's the example from a video earlier in this series for capturing books, customers, and orders for an online bookstore. We have a customer table, a book table, and an order table. We'll apply the first step to this design, which is adding a primary key. In this example, I'll add a new column called ID to each of the tables. I'll add the letters PK next to each of them here to indicate it is a primary key. Notice how I followed the same convention for all tables by naming the column ID. This makes it easier for us and others in the future. Step two is about relating the tables together. The most common relationship between two tables is the one-to-many relationship. But here's the tricky part. You need to figure out the direction of the relationship. Which table is on the one side and which is on the many side? This is important as it will determine which table has the foreign key and how the data is stored. An easy way to work this out is to ask yourself this question about the two tables or entities involved. Does table A have many table B entities, or does table B have many table A entities? You swap in the table names where I have mentioned table A and B here. Let's see an example. Two of the tables in our database design are customer and order. Does a customer have many orders, or does an order have many customers? In this example, a customer can have many orders they can place many orders from this online bookstore. But an order is associated with only one customer. So our question is answered. A customer can have many orders. The third step is to add a foreign key, now that we have the answer to the direction of the relationship. Where do we add it? We add the foreign key to the entity on the many side of our answer to that question. The answer to the question was a customer can have many orders. The many side is orders, so we add the customer ID to the order table. I'll add a new column here and call it customer ID. The column in the customer table is called ID and it is represented in the order table as customer ID. It's okay that these two columns have different names because they are representing the same thing. I can't call this column ID because we already have an ID column for the primary key of this order table. We add the letters FK here to indicate it is a primary key. Now we can draw a line between the two tables to show they are related. In Lucidchart, we draw the line from the primary key column to the foreign key column, like this. It now connects these two tables. We can see that the connection on the foreign key side has these extra lines here. This means that there can be many records on this side. It shows that a customer can have many records and not the other way around. So we've correctly related these two tables. Step four is to keep applying this logic to the rest of your tables. For each new table, determine the relationship type and the direction by asking that question earlier in the video. Then add the foreign key to one of the tables and draw a line to connect them. This is how we relate the tables together in a database. It works for databases with two, three, and many more tables. You might be wondering what happens if both sides of the relationship are true. Let's look at our other table in the diagram, the book table. We know that a book is related to an order because customers place orders for books. Which way does the relationship go? Let's find out. Does an order have many books or does a book have many orders? Well, in this situation, both are true. An order can be placed for one, two, three, or 10 books, for example. A book can be ordered many times by different customers. How do we handle this? This type of relationship is called a many-to-many -many relationship. To handle this, you need to create an intermediate table or joining table, which holds the foreign keys from both sides of the relationship. I have a video linked in the description that explains how to do this step-by-step. -step. Let's quickly recap. First, ensure every table has a primary key. Then, determine the direction of your one-to-many relationships by asking that question. Step three is to add the foreign key table on the many side. Then keep going with this process for the remaining tables. For a many-to-many -many relationship, you'll create a joining table to relate them. Now that your tables are related in your design, it's time to build your database using SQL. In the next video, I'll share five tips to design an effective database.
including how to convert a diagram like this into SQL so you can run it on a database. Thanks for watching.